my name is Roger Brinker. I'm one of the master guides for the Barnstone Studios. And I'm here today with uh, a student, Sean, who uh, has been working on the Drawing One. And so he's ready with some homework that he's been producing and has some questions. And I thought I'd take some time to review that work with him. Uh, this is one that Myron would have complained about. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> because, because it has a lot of sort of wiggling lines along the way. So if you look at this neck, it's actually not built on a straight line path, but it's actually slowly sloping out yeah. and working its way back in. And it actually flattens and straightens out here. So you're actually dealing with something that can have a little bit of complexity to it. But I'll show you an example of how we could visualize it. So if I draw this silhouette, I'm coming straight across at the top. Yep. And then I'm turning the band, a kind of, and I'm going to draw a little oversized, yeah. uh, a, a little bit of a curved turn, then it goes straight, mm -hmm. then it stops, it goes straight down on a diagonal, stops again, comes on a long diagonal in this direction, mm -hmm. curves, mm -hmm. then essentially comes straight at that point. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it meets the beginning of the neck, which comes straight down, and then it changes, and now I'm just going to come along a break that's going slightly diagonal, mm -hmm. diagonal again, and then it goes vertical at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's our, that's our silhouette of this bottle. And if we say that the center line would be about here, then the other side would simply be mirrored over. Mm -hmm across the center line. So here's the interesting thing. When we look at the directions of these lines, it's actually referencing back to what Myron said in the beginning of the first lesson, where he said there are five marks in classical drawing, which uh, starts with a point, mm -hmm. which is not a line. Mm -hmm. um, and then he mentions a horizontal, a vertical, a diagonal, and then he shows a curve. He says, that's your alphabet for uh, classical linear design. Now, the interesting thing about the point, because people think, well, that seems pretty trivial, but the interest, uh, the, what's great is when one line meets up with another, mm -hmm. where they cross, that is the point. That's the intersection. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find intersections wherever lines cross and they become the starting point for all kinds of uh, coincidences that you could see in a design. So this is now a combination of all of these. So here's your horizontal. From about here to here, it's on a curve. Mm -hmm. Then here we're on a diagonal until it meets this uh, point. Here we're on a new diagonal, a new diagonal which flows into a curve. Mm -hmm. This becomes horizontal and then we meet up with a vertical. So, if I continue to show what these um, lines reach toward, you'll find they're going to create a two-dimensional shape. For instance, this is part of what could be a rectangular kind of uh, mark. This being circular is actually rolling through and continuing till it hits the top. Mm -hmm. This is related to a triangle that ultimately goes up to the center point when or the center line we when we reach beyond and it will triangulate out to its partner on the other side and where it stops we would have the horizontal coming across yeah what's interesting here is as i run this horizontal across and this is this is not an accurate drawing of this of course but what i'm finding here is that this comes so close to this horizontal line that when I go to actually analyze the original, I want to see if they line up. Yeah. Because my instinct is as a designer, I would absolutely want those two to link together. So look for those kinds of coincidences. So now when I come down to this one, it's projecting here. This one is projecting up through and beyond again. Now we're getting a new circle here. And this comes across. And then we have this projecting down like a rectangle and so on. So that's the linear language that's going to form the, uh, the geometry where we're just following the silhouette. 
but then you're going to see how all of those parts be laid inside. Hi, I'm Kat Barnstone Saffron and the director of Barnstone Studios. Myron Barnstone was my father, an international artist and an accomplished teacher. In 1979, he opened up the Barnstone Studios in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and eventually it grew to a size that we had to move to Copley, PA for 10,000 square feet. 10,000 square feet of students working hard, of Myron work, walking from student to student, making sure they understood the nuances. Myron would have three or four or five different levels of student in one class. And each time he got to talk to them, it was on their level. And that's what we're working with with our Master Guide series. So today you saw a clip of our Master Guide, Roger Brinker, working with the more advanced students. This is part of what Myron would have done. He would have made sure to spend time with each person where they were. We are providing for you that opportunity to watch these videos that will teach you what you might find missing simply taking the using the workbook and taking the class. So we ask if you would like the full lecture to join us on Patreon. It would be $25 a month and you will have access to a full catalog. Major artists like Da Vinci had patrons. Patreon is giving you an opportunity to help be our patron. We really appreciate all your participation and enjoy the rest of the videos. As Myron would always say, be well.